Hi, my name is Randy Wardell, and I'm going to show you how to replace the element relays in a Gen Ken kiln. The example kiln that I have here is a two element kiln, but the same process would apply if you had a single element kiln or a kiln with three or more elements. A relay is a small electronic box that sends the power to the elements. And when you hear the clicking every time your kiln turns off and on, what you're hearing is the action inside one of these relays. Whenever you have to replace a relay in a multi-element kiln, it's always a good idea to replace all the relays at the same time. After all, if one relay has gone, the others are sure to follow. So the first thing we need to determine is how do we know when an element relay needs to be replaced? The easiest way to tell if there's something wrong, when you turn on your kiln, if only one of the indicator lights comes on, that tells you that one of the elements is not firing. Or perhaps you just finished a firing that took way too long to get to temperature. That is also an indicator that one of the elements is not coming on. The other way to tell if there's something wrong is to turn the kiln on, then use your hand to see if you can detect any heat. I'm not feeling any heat at all in the upper elements, but there certainly is enough coming from that bottom element. Usually it's the relay that is the problem here, and all you have to do is order a new set of relays for your kiln from your kiln manufacturer. Okay, so let's replace those relays. First, detach the kiln from the power supply. Now we're going to remove these four screws right here so that we can pull the controller box off of the kiln. Not this part. We don't want to take that off. Only this part here, the entire control box. So let's start with the top right hand screw. We're going to use a one quarter inch socket driver. This one fits into the end of a screwdriver. You could get one that fits into a ratchet socket style. It doesn't matter. And you could even do this with a pair of pliers if you had to. So let's remove this top screw first. Then we're going to go down and take the screw that's directly below it on the right hand side. Now we're going to move to the left hand side, but the first thing we have to do is remove this lid support bracket. It's going to get in our way. So let's use a 3 8 inch wrench just to remove that outer nut. Once the nut comes off, the bracket pops right off. Now we can remove these two screws here. So let's start with the bottom screw. Then we'll remove the top screw, which is the final screw. And as we begin to loosen off that top screw, the control box is going to become loose. So make sure you hold on to it a little. Now there are wires attached on the inside of this control box, so be careful as you lift it off. I like to gently fold it forward, and there are the two relays right there. There's not a lot of play here because of the, all the wires attached, so I'm going to take these two wires off which are attached to the thermal couple. Now the red one is on the right hand side and the yellow one is on the left hand side. All I have to do is just loosen off the screw a couple of turns and that wire comes right out of there. Do the same with the yellow side. Loosen it off a couple of turns. Pull that yellow wire out of there. I ordered my relays and here they are and it's always a good idea to replace both of them at the same time. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at the old one and there's the two wires I will remove first. So I use a pair of needle nose pliers and move it back and forth, left to right, until it comes off of there. Same thing on the other side. Grab it with a pair of needle nose pliers and move it left to right until that blade comes off of there. So I'm going to take my first relay and put it right back in the exactly the same clip so I know where it came from. Do the same on the other relay because I don't want to mix these wires up. So I push that in. Now, move these two relays out of the way, and let's do the same thing for the next pair of wires. So I use my needle nose pliers again, and I'm going to move the back and forth, left to right, until it pops off of there. Grab a hold of the second one, and move it left to right until it pops off of there. And go back to my new relays, put those blades straight on, right, replacing them right back where they came off the old ones. Now move those back out to the side again, and let's get going at the next ones. Now this one back here is a little more difficult because it's two connected into one. So you just have to give a little bit more, but be careful. You don't want to ruin it. And it's going to be a little harder to snap into position as well. So I'm going to, I find using my fingers to get this to go. Now listen for the snap. 
It's a very big click and you know that it's seated. So let's pull the next one. Now this next one actually goes in the opposite direction. This one's going to go from front to back. Take a look at the blade and you'll see in the relay what I mean. So I'm moving it front to back, front to back, until that pops off. And put that into the blade, exactly where it came off of the old one. Let's go to the other relay and do the same thing. Again, side to side for this one. This is the one with the double wire on it. Once it comes off of there, I'm going to pop it into the correct position on my new relay until it snaps. And then we're going to pull the final wire off. And again, this goes in the opposite direction, front to back, until that pops. And we'll put the final one onto the last blade. And now we've replaced all of the wires from our old relays into the new relays. So let's just move these off to the side so that we can get at the nuts now. We have to remove these nuts, just the front nuts, so that we can get those old relays out of there. So I use a pair of pliers just to loosen that nut off a little bit. Then I'll put my finger down in there and just spin it in a counterclockwise direction until that nut is completely loose and pull that nut off of there. Do the same thing for the relay on the right. Loosen that nut off just a bit. Use your finger to continue removing it until that nut comes completely off. The next step is to remove those screws. So we're just going to lift it up and push the screws out with our finger. So that one pushes straight through like that and there it pops and the second one is a little more difficult. So I use the end of my pliers just to push down on that screw until it pops. Now we'll loosen off the nuts at the back of the relays just a quarter turn or so. And that way we can just slide that relay right out of there. Do the same to the relay on the right hand side. Slide that relay out, and that's it. They're gone. Now, let's put those new relays back into position. So, the one on the right-hand side, we get it into position. Put my hand underneath to lift up on that screw so I can slide that relay underneath that nut. Once it's under there, I'll push the screw back up from underneath and then replace the nut. Now, make sure that the lock washer part of the nut is facing down. That's the part that kind of looks like a gear. That locking device will keep the nut from loosening off over time. So get it down there nice and tight, then use a pair of pliers. In this case, I'm going to use my needle nose pliers just to snug it up because we'll tighten these screws up completely a little bit later. So now look what happened. One of those wires popped off as I was doing that. But that's okay because there's only one spot that can possibly go back in, so I'm going to put it in right now. So let's put the relay in on the left hand side. We'll slide that relay underneath the nut on the left hand side. Once it's seated there, we can grab the screw and push it back up from underneath till it comes through. Grab our nut, making sure that the lock washer is down. Then spin it onto the threads until it's seated. Use the needle nose pliers just to snug it up. and make sure all of my wires are seated completely. So I'm going to check every single one of them and give them a little shake just to make sure they're seated all the way down, all four on either side. Once I know that's done, we're going to lift up the control box and use the screwdriver now to tighten those four screws down. Remember I said we were going to snug them up? So the lock washer portion of those nuts are going to actually hold them in position as I tighten them down with the screwdriver. Now I want to make sure those screws are good and tight so those relays can't move on me. Now lay the control box back down on its face and let's reattach the two wires to the thermal couple. So move the control box right in tight. Then we'll put the red wire on the right hand screw and the yellow wire on the left hand screw. So just push that wire in there and then tighten that screw down. Give it pretty snug. Do the same with the red wire on the right hand side and snug that screw down. Now just give a tug on those to make sure that they're tight, and they are. So the final step is to reattach the control box to the front of the kiln. We'll start with that screw in the top right hand side. Just get it into position. We'll use our nut driver to, to turn that screw in, but we're not going to tighten it too hard yet. Let's leave them a little bit loose. It'll be easier for us to get the other screws into position. 
So the same thing on this left hand top side. Just snug it up but not too tight. Put the one in the bottom left hand side. Again, just snug it up but not too tight. And the final screw is the bottom right hand side. So use your fingers to get the screw into position, then use the nut driver to screw it all the way in. This time we can tighten it down. Then we'll go back and tighten down the other three screws as well. And that's it. We've just finished installing two relays. All that's left to do now is to replace the lid support, make sure that the teeth are facing out, slide it onto the threaded bolt, then use the nut to snug it down. Now don't tighten this up too much. Remember you want this to be able to be easy to move up and down. And that's it. So all that's left is to plug it back into the wall and test it. So the first thing that's going to happen is it will have this long beep and then LP will show up. So let's go ahead and turn the kiln on. There it is in the on position and cross our fingers and hope both lights come on. Takes a while so be patient. And there it is. Perfect. Both lights are on. That tells us that the relays are working. Let's give it the warm test with our hands just to make sure that both of them are working and they are. So our kiln is back in business.